Good morning, everyone. This is Amar at Sales for Life, and welcome to the Social Success Factor. I wanted to feature successful sales professionals and feature sales leaders who are huge advocates of social media in the sales process, and I'm here to deliver for you. So this morning, I have Mr. Stephen Arneson all the way from the other side of the pond in merry old England. Stephen, good morning. Good morning, Amar. How are you? I'm I'm doing well. It's 6:30 a.m. Toronto time. It's 11:30 for Stephen. So we are really dedicated to making this interview happen, and hence I'm, I'm waking up super early for this. So Stephen, I really I appreciate your time. Deal. <laughs> I really appreciate your time, Stephen. So team, the reason I met Stephen was because I actually read a blog by him. Stephen has started a blog. He's a senior sales leader. And um, the blog, I'm going to leave the link for it below, talked about a huge concept and I thought it was expressed brilliantly. It talked about this concept called being the natural conclusion in sales. And I think Stephen will articulate this. So Stephen, I'm going to turn it over to you right now. Tell us about being the natural conclusion in sales today. Um, well, I think my my perspective on selling is that if you work the, the buying process correctly and follow the process that your buyer wants to, to, uh, to, to, to go through, um, then the natural conclusion to that process should be a, you know, a great valuable agreement between two parties. Um, I, I'm completely against uh, trying to sort of artificially force a client to do something which they're maybe not quite ready to do. So, you know, I think salespeople can do two things. They follow the buying process and look to add value throughout that buying process at every single point possible. And if they do that well and they do that correctly, then the natural conclusion should be an agreement between two parties at the end. I love that definition. So let's let's dig into that a little bit more if we may. So it's interesting how you're using the term buying process and not sales cycle. And and why is that if I may ask? Well, I you know, as salespeople, I think we've been we've been taught or instructed for many years to to do our best to control the sales cycle and shorten the sales cycle as much as possible. I think uh, I think the the power of the relationship between buyer and seller um, has absolutely switched in in recent years, hmm. and buyers ha are much more informed and are much more uh, powerful in that relationship. And I think a salesperson has less opportunity to control a sales cycle um, but lots of opportunity to to work with their buyer in parallel in a buying cycle so from my perspective I believe that a salesperson that truly understands buyer behavior and the buying process should match their sales process to the to the buyers process so Stephen that's a really I mean this is a tectonic shift right let's call it the way it is um, because the traditional world of sales, number one, doesn't do this. There are a myriad of sales consultants who still teach old school sales um, strategies, let's call them. So how can salespeople today get to know the buyer's journey effectively? How, how did you do it in the past and, and what would you encourage a sales professional listening to this do? I think the, the, the big change MR is that the buying process starts very, very early. Um, and the buying process starts before a salesperson is even aware that the buying process has started. And for me, that's where social media comes into the, to the equation. Um, buyers are looking to research and understand potential solutions to their problems uh, via social media, via the internet, via lots of, of, of social media channels. Much much earlier um, than they may have once done hmm. and long before they will actually engage a salesperson. So th this is where social media is coming into its own. Um, the ability for salespeople to actually engage and in some ways influence uh, a, a buying process without actually being actively involved in a sales process. So basically, um, if I were to sum it up in a few words, you're essentially encouraging salespeople and their sales leaders 
to engage early and engage often. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, and engage in, in uh, via different channels. So you know, let's think about traditionally salespeople would have a list of contacts and they'd literally be you know, smiling and dialing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, th there are so many different options these days and so many different channels to contact buyers through. I think I I'm, I'm encouraging salespeople and sales leaders to explore those channels and look at the, uh, the, the different forms of social media and how that can help them open up uh, conversations and engage with buyers very early. Let's, uh, yeah, and I, I totally agree with that. You know, there's, there's stats from a myriad of, uh, of authorities out there. I mean, Aberdeen has done studies, so has Forrester, so has the CEB. There's a lot of stats out there. Now, I, you know, and Stephen, I'll tell you a funny story. So last week I was speaking at a conference, and, and an individual, a very respected individual, um, got up on stage and basically said, all this mumbo-jumbo about, 57% of the buyer's journey being done before a, a you know, buyer reaches out, it's garbage. Yeah. Don't listen to it. And I thought it was so <laughs> telling, right, that senior sales leaders, even today, are mocking and, and, and they don't take it seriously because ultimately, you're right, I do agree that at some level, I don't know what the percentage is, I've never done those studies, and I don't think the percentage is the point, Stephen. I really think it's about just knowing intuitively that a buyer is starting something without us as salespeople. Maybe that's 10%. Maybe they're doing 30% of the research. Maybe it's 80%. Who knows? But I think I agree with you when you say that there is something happening online and us as a sales community have to do something to catch up to the buyer, right? Um, yeah. I, Emma, I think that um, yeah, some some people, some buyers, will be doing their, their you know, starting their buying cycle early without engaging salespeople. Uh, there'll still be some buyers out there that are engaging salespeople at the point where they, they start their buying process. I, I think um, you know, my, my argument here is uh, if you're not active in social media and active with content marketing, um, then you're going to miss out on a huge percentage of, of the buyers who could be looking at your product or solution. Um, and that percentage is actually going to start to grow over time. There, there will still be people operating you know, how they've always operated in the sort of more traditional manner. Um, but if you don't do it, you're missing those people that have moved on into, into what I would call the new world. Yeah, the, and wow, what a new world it is for sure. Um, Stephen, what advice would you give sales leaders who are, you know, on the fence about social media? I think everyone today believes what you're saying. There's, at least I hope so. Fingers crossed. But <laughs> tactically, what would you suggest? Because I really don't endorse this whole "let's jump in with two feet" approach. You know, what what's your strategy to get involved as a sales leader? I think I'd start small. Uh, as a sales leader, I would start to um, start to support the need for for your sales team to utilize social media uh, across multiple channels. Everybody has a has a LinkedIn profile, or, or most people these days have a LinkedIn profile. But actually, salespeople, if you look across your sales team, there'll be a much smaller percentage that actually use Twitter as an example and um, there'll be an even fewer number that maybe write blog posts and, and that sort of thing. Um, as a sales leader I would uh, recommend that you start to invest um, in some sort of first-hand training for salespeople around how to to grasp the basics of social media. Um, in, you know, I, did it, I did a similar exercise some time ago um, and literally assessed the whole of the sales team. We went through every single salesperson's LinkedIn profile. We looked at, at whether they're on Twitter. We looked at the sort of content that they were posting. And what I found is that actually there were, you know, it followed the standard sort of distribution curve. You, you had some salespeople that were great, fantastic LinkedIn profiles, fantastic Twitter accounts. But the, the large majority could could improve with a, a very small amount of investment and a very small amount of focus. So a sales leader moving into social media these days, um, take it slowly, 
one or two steps, help your team, support your team with a little bit of investment to get them up and running with the basics. That would be my first step. Test before you invest, essentially. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I totally endorse that strategy as well. So Stephen, you know, parting words from you, we've got a huge audience that watches these blogs and these interviews. What words of motivation and encouragement can you give, again, sales leaders, but uh, you know, mostly sales professionals watching this, what words of wisdom can you leave with them? How should they start? Why should they start? Give us your, give us your two cents on that. Well, I think my, my reaction to that, Imar, is if, you know, if, if they've not started already, then, then please get on with it. Um, you, you need to have a, a social media profile, you need to be using them, and uh, you need to be using them in the, in the correct ways, both for, for, for sharing your ideas, sharing your inspiration, sharing content, but also from a point of view of researching and understanding clients and some of the issues that they're facing, because you can gain a huge amount of that through social media as well. So my, my, my message is going to be very, very simple. Um, make sure that you're on social media, you're using it effectively, and dive in, um, because yeah, it, it's, it's one potential way for you as a salesperson to differentiate yourself from all of the other salespeople out there. And you know, if you start to do that, then you start to smash your quarter. So um, there's my recommendation. Get on it, understand it, you know, move forward. It's great advice. And, and I'll kind of use what you've just said to tie it back to a very earlier point in this interview where you said salespeople have the ability today to influence the buyer online before this buying journey might have even taken a foothold of some kind. So. I completely agree with you, Stephen. I want to thank you for your time. Folks, this is Stephen Arneson, a very respected sales leader all the way from across in Europe. I wanted to bring him live this morning because I find his words really encouraging. I'm going to leave a link to his blog and once again, to end it off, be the natural conclusion. If you do your job well, be that natural conclusion. Don't leave the buyer any opportunity not to choose you. So thanks again for watching, Stephen. Once again, thank you, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Emma.